I never had the idea to make a book, never. The idea came slowly in the mind of my wife, of Eliane, who edited all these archives. And we put together some amazing pictures sometime were never published nowhere. Not when I was at Gamma, when I was at Sigma, and never later. And some story at the beginning of the book in 1960, that triggers the idea of Eliane to say, ah, we are going to see more of your work, what you did in the United States, because after all these years, I was most known for my work on foreign countries. In uh, 1970, when I was at Sigma after 73 to 79, 82, I did so many stories in Russia, in China, in Africa, uh, in Korea, in Japan, so many in India, I stay a year in India. So, so many of my work was known, the JP Lafont works, well, it was illustration in foreign countries. And Eliane discovered that, after all, I was six years at the White House, who is Mr. Nixon, who is President Nixon. I was up to the end of the Watergate. I followed the Watergate A to Z. For example, United States story. I worked a lot with the farmers. Altogether, she's right when she said that I spent about two years together because I was living for a month, coming back, living for a month and a half, coming back, waiting for the crops, waiting for the reposition of some farms that I knew. So I worked more or less two years on agriculture. But I did the crisis, the economic crisis in Detroit, the first one. I spent a month and a half in Detroit over there and tried to understand what's happening in that city the end of General Motor going down. I did all this industry collapsing. United States story. So oh, this is how the book, to answer your question, came and took form. It is in Eliane's hand, Eliane's eyes, and she put together the 60s and the 70s and naturally the 80s, all the picture I did in United States. I arrived in the United States in April uh, 65, and I wanted to be a photojournalist. Uh, in Europe, I was doing something else. I was doing celebrities, portraiture, a movie star. I was working on movie set with Metro Goldwyn Mayer in, 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 in Rome and so on. But I, I always wanted to become a photojournalist. So with a friend, we decided to eventually try to do a small agency. And I came in 65, I arrived in New York, and we did nothing, we did not work at all. So I had to work alone, I had to understand and to photograph what I was looking at around me it was extraordinary. And I did a story one day by accident, in, in the street, uh, it was two guys, obviously uh, gay, uh, n n nice young man. They told me, do you want to take a picture of us? You are a photographer because I had a camera around the neck. I said, sure. So I took a picture of them and I came back the next day with some prints. And uh, they told me, but uh, you would like to, to see all our friends. We live in this building. So I said, yes. I went in the building. It was between uh, Central Park West and Broadway on 65th Street, a street extremely elegant today. And those people, those men, were prostitutes at night. They were transvestites. Uh, around, started to be in the street around 2 a.m. to all the morning. And they were more or less on the side of the Lincoln Center today, which is 63 to 66th Street. The Lincoln Center, matter of fact, was almost finished at that time, finished, but it was a wild area, an area with a very poor area, a very popular area. And uh, I did, in this building, in two days of visiting those um, young men, I did a a story that I did not know it was a story. I did, I did picture of them and I gave the picture to them. I came back and I gave them my print. And I put that in the storage. I never touch it. When I become Sigma, uh, Gamma, I never give it to Gamma. I never give it to Sigma because it wasn't my personal work. And Eliane discovered it. 
So this is what uh, the touching story. You, you wanted to have one. I had s several, but this one touched me very much because I discovered it completely with uh, Trillian eyes. When I arrived in the United States, I had no money. And uh, I had this project to become a photojournalist with a friend who was a radio reporter. It never worked. And I started to photograph New York, what I could see around me. And it was a very dangerous city. 42nd Street uh, was really a difficult street to be, which is today, it's a Disneyland. It's a, everybody goes there with their kids and safe, but not at that time. And uh, also the Bronx. I went to the Bronx, I went to Harlem, I photographed the Jazz Mobile in Harlem, that was my first contact pictures in the United States and also the Bronx in 1966, the summer of 66. I explored the Bronx very much, it was dangerous, it was collapsing, the abandoned car was everywhere, the kids were playing in the garbage. I was very shocked by all this and I photographed all these pictures. Some are in the book and I never used them before. It was really something we, we, we discovered but with Eliane editing the, 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 my contact, my old negatives that uh, I never gave to anybody. And that was my first pictures in, uh, of, uh, of, of New York at that time. The title come uh, in one of my interview with the publisher. Her name is uh, Martha Hallett, and she is running. She is a CEO of Glitterati, and she decided to do my book the strange way. We came to see her with my wife, with about seventy prints, and she opened the box and. She did nothing for the two or three first picture. And after the picture number maybe 15 or 20, she closed the box and she said, I will do that book, that sample. And then talking to her, I said that the United States was and is for me a, a paradise for a photographer. And she used that sentence. And I was furious at the beginning because I don't want to say that America is a paradise. Far away, it's not. But for a photographer, it is. Because of the access you have everywhere. I can take, I am 79 today. I can take my camera, I go in the street, go in a subway, take the picture I want. Nobody will ask me anything. In many, many countries, you cannot do it today. You cannot. You need to introduce yourself, ask the permission to photograph. Everything is rented. Or you have to have a tag around the neck with your, the name of your agency and everything. N not in this country. Please, the photographer, photojournalist or whatever in American have to realize that we still are in the United States in an extraordinary nest of freedom for a photographer. And this is a part of that. Do not forget that I was in the United States and my agencies Gamma and mostly Sigma were in Europe. So 99% of my film, I was given my film at the airport at night. And I could not see my work. I could not see my contact. I could not see if I was under or overexposed in that... Nothing. I, I was already doing something else the next day. So... To answer your question, when I receive my archives and I have time now to look at it, there is a lot of film, matter of fact, about percentage of at least 60% of the contact that I see, I see them for the first time. And yes, I was very surprised because 
I criticize myself very, very much. Why did you use that lens? Why did you not come back the next day? You have no lens. You have all this picture with the same lens. I forgot that you don't have the time to change or something. But I criticize very, very much my picture. Very much. I love the picture of the others and I hate my picture. <laughs> Even the book, okay, it's a good book, I think. I like it, but I always... You see, the cover of my book, for example, which is a, a person that I photograph on the floor on August 23rd, 1972, in Miami at the Republican Convention, it was a bunch of students, young people, who were protesting against the Vietnam War. And they were pretending to be the victim of the United States. And this picture, I had a Leica. I had a 90 millimeter on my Leica, black and white. And there were about 20 of them. And I photographed them all. And I photographed them individual heads because it was each of them had extraordinary makeup. It's black and white, I did not shoot in color. And this picture, I did only one, not two. Not one in color, one in black and white, I just did one picture. Just to show you that how it was at that time. I did not believe in the, when I was taking picture. I did not think that it was so important. Maybe tomorrow will be another people like them. And I'm glad I recorded because the next day they were not there. And uh, it was a way we had. I did not work with motor drive. I worked with my hand. One picture and then another picture and then another picture. So I have only one negative. I'm glad this was, was not lost. I found it, <laughs> it was there. But uh, this is the way we were taking pictures at that time. The next book coming out of my archives, I cannot do whatever I want. It is my illustration in foreign countries. It's very important that I am editing now and putting together my negative because the negative are separated from the contact, separated from the transparency, separated from the print, and separated from the text. So all this has to be together in one folder to understand the story, to edit. If not, you cannot find your picture. So this is what I am doing almost each day for this. And then the, the personalities. Because I photograph a lot of personalities. Uh, in Hollywood, I photograph a lot of movie stars, but I never publish them. I, they, they were published at the moment of the movie, when the movie come out, and nothing else. But today, it is something, I think it's a big bulk of my work, and eventually there is a book about it. Well, it's a difficult question for me to answer. Why? Because I was not a classic photojournalism myself. I picked my story, I decided where to go, I decided the plane I want to go, how long I stay? If I had to stay one month, six months, a year, I did it, and I did it several times. I left one day for to follow to photograph the campaign of Indira Gandhi, and I stayed a year with her. You see, there is no photojournalism today who can do that like me, like I did. Well, I wish, this is my wish, if you ask me this question, this is my wish, I start a career again with only one camera, digital, I will never lose my pictures, it's automatic focusing, it is a white balance, I don't need a flash, which today we have camera shooting at 18,000 ISO, and on and on, I, it's a dream, and you always know where you took this picture, what day you took these pictures, and uh, some are uh, GPS inside of the camera, and you know exactly in what village you did this in Africa or something like that, that you forgot that you never have the time to mark on your log. If 
I have to give an advice, it is to prepare your own story today, to know completely A to Z the story you are going to do or you want to do. You believe in your story, you stick to it, you learn it, and you go yourself. If you have the chance to develop a small relationship with a client, you can always offer your story before you go. But definitely, you have to go because you believe inside of you what you're going to see, what you want to show.